Welcome back to Dishonored the Knife of Dunwall. Let's free more of our captured assassins. both ways, didn't I? Gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Never doubt it. <clears throat> I'll write to her again. She has to see reason. from a journalist's report on organized criminal activity. One gentleman of advanced age swore that his brother had been taken by the Whalers, a notorious gang associated with the man called Dowd. According to Peter Mansfield, his brother Radoff was proud of working with the Royal Spymaster's Responsible Citizens Group, feeling no shame in reporting on what he perceived as shady dealings by his rivals at the fish markets. But this might have been the source of his trouble. On the sixth evening of the month of hearths, Radoff came storming into Peter's home, white-faced and panic-stricken, claiming to have been chased by a group of ruffians wearing the leather suits and vapor masks used by the men working in the whale oil factories. Peter gave him supper and drink, sending him on his way later in the night, after which Radoff was never seen again. and pure, I do every man's work. <clears throat> if he comes back, I'll earn another promotion. <laughs> oh. Have they fully discovered me yet? I don't... I don't know? I saw red, but their bars aren't all the way filled. Um. Uh. What am I standing on? Nothing, I guess. Whew. skulking around. <clears throat> Oh. <laughs> 
I caught that blood. I heard the like sound of a melon exploding too. Blink. I assume they can't see me through this glass. I hope. Oh, they can't. See if we can get their attention, actually. They didn't react, did they? Look out. Disoriented. Magic will not work. I know you're here. Find the outsider. Shout if you see him. Let thy hands not be restless. Reveal yourself. Give yourself up. Come out. We both know you're weak at heart. Overseer Pike, I have taken the Commerce Building. A temporary headquarters has been set up at a nearby structure. My men are dealing with a number of captives that should prove to be very informative. We've achieved a total victory here, catching the enemy by surprise. The plans for a larger, coordinated assault were obviously unnecessary. I'm confident that Dowd will show himself and will be in our custody shortly. Overseer Leonard Hume. Acquire the assault plans from the Overseer Headquarters. Anybody left here? I think I've heard some footsteps. I think they're over that direction though, outside of this building, so let's explore. Excerpt from Dowd's personal journal. Billy Lurk watches me closely, studying my decisions, each move I make. That's nothing new. Even as a kid, there was a quiet curiosity there, though curiosity is not quite the right word. But lately it seems more intense. I'll feel the hairs on my neck standing up, only realizing a moment later that Lurk is on a roof or balcony nearby. Some mornings, some of my papers seem to be moved, maybe poured over, when we're alone and Billy's comfortable with the mask off, questions come from odd angles unrelated to our mission or to a specific target. Questions about what I'm thinking, about my attitude towards the target. 
It's odd. Something to watch. Another puzzle. Every one of my whalers is good, though my gifts seem stronger in some than in others. The outsider's mark is a mysterious, is a mystery in this way, not something I can control. Those who remain with me either gain in the use of my extraordinary abilities or they don't. Those who don't, I just push towards the blade, the crossbow, or the study of poisons. Everyone among them serves in some way, and together we've spilled a sea of blood. Lurk is a quicker study than most, but stays aloof from the others. It's no matter to me as long as orders get carried out. Doubt's personal journal again. Delilah Copperspoon. Who is she and why is everyone afraid of her? Strange that a painter should have so much influence, or that she should have any connection to my life and what I've done. My fate is my own. Always has been. The problem is I don't know enough. There are missing pieces. I can't imagine how or why Delilah is linked to the death of the Empress, but the outsider wouldn't bother saying it unless it contains some grain of truth. Now it's driving me mad, like a puzzle I can't get out of my head. A riddle in pigment and blood. No doubt that black-eyed bastard takes delight in watching me twist into knots. He knows I can't abide a mystery. Billy has little insight to offer. None of the usual vitriol when I bring up the name Delilah. Just a shrug. Just tell me how you want this handled. It's odd behavior for Lurk. If I find this Delilah and cut her throat, maybe I can dodge what's coming. The consequences the outsider spoke of. Or maybe ending her life will bring the entire city down on my head. When I face her, will I see the eyes of the Empress? Can I go through with it, even if it's the only way to save my own skin? Somehow I suspect there's more to Delilah than portraits and sculptures. I'll find out more when I talk to the Timch family. Latest log entry. 18 years on this wretched rock in this city of filth. I've felt the blood of scholars, of noble pedophiles, of guildsmen, of unfaithful lovers, of politicians who were far too just for their own good, and of law enforcers who came too close to bringing the wrong man to justice. Why should an empress be any different? Why should I feel the entire weight of this dying city crushing down on my back? Corvo, Lord Protector, is of Circonos, just as I once was. I might have known that fact already, but it didn't matter until I recognized it in his face. It brought back distant memories of home, and the optimistic young man I once was. What would I find if I went back there? Would I find that it is rotted from the inside, just like Dunwall? Or will it only appear that way because I'm the one who's rotted? We can do something fun here. Let's test out slow down time. Ooh, that lasts for a while, doesn't it? Longer than I thought. Someone get over here. Take this. I didn't realize there was two more. <laughs> nice. Ooh, rats are having a nice little chomp. The Rudshore Chamber of Commerce. Excerpt from a book covering the various districts across Dunwall and their histories. Uh, wait, we've already read this, haven't we? 
Yeah, we've read that. The Empress. Uh, I don't feel any need to read that. The Lighthouse. Excerpt from a recent historical work on King Sparrow Island. King Sparrow Island sits in the middle of the Renhaven River, and up through the previous century it was only used by fishermen and for occasional religious ceremonies. During the time of the Morley Insurrection, a fort and naval dock were added to the island as a means of protecting the city from attacks by sea. In the time of the Rat Plague Crisis, shortly after the tragic death of Empress Jessamine Caldwin, Dunwall's acting regent, uh, Hiram Burroughs commissioned the construction of a modernized military installation and lighthouse on the island. Burroughs Lighthouse, only recently completed, is widely considered to be one of the marvels of the modern age, humming with Sokolov's technologies, powered by processed whale oil. The Royal Protector. Right, Corvo was the Royal Protector, right? I don't feel like reading this either. The Eradication of Black Sally. Excerpt from a popular story of crime and daring by Jules Robin, Robin and the City Watch. Before Slackjaw ran the streets in the distillery district, there was no boss more ruthless, violent, or dedicated to squeezing the average citizen for coin than Black Sally. Like so many from Morley, she was pale-skinned and green-eyed, with hair as black as the void. They say that she started young, and as a girl she'd stun a man with her looks, coming upon him in an alley, and smile a one-sided smile and suddenly run him through with a knife. She'd have his money and be on her way before he breathed his final breath. As a boss, she was worse, ruling over the meanest street gang Dunwall had seen up to that time. Her operation touched everything from shipping to prostitution. She even had a racket going with the Baker's Guild. A finger in every pie, indeed. One man, Watch Captain Jules Robin, made it his mission to stop her, and kept the case going for half a decade. Black Sally met her end when Robin, uh, Robin had his men light smoke fires in barrels near the warehouse where she had hid out during the day. As she and her gang rushed into the streets, terrified the building was burning, Captain Robin and his top officers threw nets over them and ran them all through with blade and pistol shot. We've only got one rune. I'm just going to save it. Scavenger, you find ammo in greater amounts. Heck yeah.
thought you could just leap away, did you? Huh? Damn! Assassin, help! Watch it! Well, that was all of mine. Three more sleep darts. Cut me loose. I see you. I'll await your signal. Oh, I'll find you. I'm doing this so messily. No, you don't. your device where the hell is that thing ah uh. Sleep darts. The Estate District. Home to some of the most powerful families in Dunwall, the Estate District has been a jewel in the city's crown for generations. No district enjoys finer restaurants or cultural events, and no families inspire more admiration or more gossip than the lords and ladies of the Estate District. The late Lord Boyle and his lovely wife perhaps best epitomize this privileged class of citizens. Their annual costume ball is the talk of high society, creating ripples throughout Dunwall when one family or another is excluded from the guest list. But it's not all play that drives the Boyles. On several occasions, they've generously brought in poor laborers from elsewhere in the city for a week or two to work on their garden or home, providing vital employment for those who need it most. With so much history, the estate district has also seen its share of trouble as fortunes are made and lost. The great Lord Preston Moray and his eccentric wife Vera were once the toast of Dunwall before tragedy struck and they fell into ruin. Riddled with canals and large homes that enjoy historical preservation tax breaks, the Estate District is a place to which we can all aspire. <laughs> I 
So spending their riches on frivolous things is not all that drives the boils. On a couple occasions, they've brought in poor people to work for a couple weeks. Oh, how generous. So nice. Abandoned journal. I've managed to make a space for myself here. Thankfully, Rudshore is all but completely abandoned. Up in this room, I'm protected from the occasional scavenger and the flooding during heavy rain. I'd like to return to my office in the Commerce Building to see if I can find some of my old books, but I've yet to build up the courage. Eventually, I'll run out of canned meats, and then I'll have no choice. No need for courage when desperation kicks in. I've got three darts. I see three people. System report. Standing water, not more than ankle deep. Something must be blocking the drainage. And then another log entry. Drainage was cleared and the standing water isn't an issue any longer. Note, pump system may be insufficient for high volume situations. Log entry. Waste high water. Drainage problems again. The accountants are going to have to swim to work if something isn't done about the pump system. Log. Last day in Rudshore. My new post starts tomorrow. I've restated my concerns about the pumps. I suggest my replacement check the valve pressures and system mechanical integrity immediately. Wait, is that why this place flooded? Because of the pumps? Or why exactly did the place flood? I don't remember. Heart, your max mana has been slightly increased. I know you're here. Hey, wake up. I know you're here somewhere, scum.
the fourth stricture. Excerpt from work detailing one of the seven strictures. Restrict the roving feet that love to trespass. They pay no heed to the boundary stones of a neighbor's fields. They wander into foreign lands, only to return with their souls blackened by inequity. Or iniquity, rather. Where have you strayed that destruction now comes behind you? Would you walk across burning coals or broken glass? Then why do you prowl into the homes of the honest, or into the dens of hidden things? For the result is the same. You will fall into the void. Instead, rest your feet on a firm foundation, so that when the winds of the outsider shriek against you, you will stand firm and not be overthrown. Excerpt from a commonly distributed overview of the seven strictures. Surround your innermost being with these strictures and you will be safe. The seven strictures are our core principles, taught and reinforced by overseers across the aisles. From these principles stem all manner of rules, social codes, and beliefs about the cosmos. The seven strictures are wandering gaze, lying tongue, restless hands, roving feet, rampant hunger, wanton flesh, and errant mind. All these behaviors must be restricted in order to keep one's heart free from malevolent influences. They are the inroads of the outsider. Well, I guess we haven't done a good job keeping the outsider out, given that we're branded with their mark. <laughs> Two runes. Mm-hmm. Void gaze. Useful objects. Want me to see people? Including their field of vision? That could be useful, honestly. Quite useful. Even though I'm really not doing a very careful playstyle. But if I ever choose to, it would be useful. Excerpt from a larger work on the history of the Overseers. The Abbey of the Everyman is the seat of religious power and inspiration for all Overseers across the Empire. The Order arose over the years to protect the common people from the ravages of the Outsider, until the need for a central bastion of authority was deemed necessary. This imposing structure is a destination for pilgrims seeking refuge or guidance. Many mistakenly attribute the Abbey's construction to High Overseer Benjamin Holger, when it was in actuality, Holger's successor, John Clavering, who laid the foundation. Shortly after the abbey was completed, every overseer in the land gathered there and began a trek to Whitecliff. There, a great siege commenced as the overseers purged the region. The battle raged against heretics, witches, and thralls of the outsider. Though Holger was killed in the struggle, Whitecliff was cleansed and the ceremonial rites that followed lasted for a month giving birth to many invocations and spe speeches which were inscribed in tomes and carried back to the abbey, where they are still revered today. There's the assault plans. This map shows a coordinated sweep of the flooded district, but the overseers here didn't stick to the plan. Someone must have tipped them off. Give yourself up. Come out. We both know you're weak at heart. Where are you? I say kill the overseers, honestly. I know I haven't been lethal with them. For the most part, have I killed any of them? I think I've been mostly non-lethal, at least. But Dowd would definitely kill the overseers, right? Dowd totally would. 
cut them down. Master Dowd. You know, I've been playing a sort of non-lethal playstyle, like kinda making a decent attempt to be non-lethal, but not trying too hard. But maybe I shouldn't be making any attempt to be non-lethal. Maybe I should be roleplaying who Dowd is as a person, and I don't think Dowd would give a shit. They would just kill everyone. Overseer leader will be questioned when he regains consciousness. After you freed our men, they routed the remaining overseers. We control the commerce building again. They were planning a larger assault, but this group of overseers attacked early, without the others from the Abbey. Where's Lurk? I'm here. I was held up. The overseers had us trapped. They've... Oh. You. Yes. Me. Everything is falling into place. Though I'd hoped the Overseers would be capable of finishing you in one try. Overseer Hume was just a little too ambitious. Fortunately, I still have one card left to play. Lurk? Sorry, Dowd. But you knew this was coming. Even if you didn't think it was so soon. You've been slipping. Ever since the Empress died. It's my time now. Your little empire's fallen to bits. Your men are dead in the streets, and our dark-eyed friend has lost interest in helping you. Quiet, Delilah. You're right, but I'm going to show respect. Dowd, blades out. We'll do this properly. Oh boy. So, definitely not going non-lethal. Oh, they're not going to come here at all. Good, I can pick it up. You once told me Billy Lurk was your finest pupil. Fast and strong with a sharp mind, it's no accident she was the only woman you ever trained. And she proved even more ruthless and deceptive than you thought. But she was no match for you. This is why in a city of horrors, parents will scare their children with a legend of Dow, the knife of Dunwall who never chose sides, who preyed on the city's lords, who never swore fealty, who brought down overseers, once even an empress. I wonder what the final chapter will be. What happens to scary monsters in the end? Yes, it's worth thinking about and putting this into context, Dowd is not a good person. At all. Not even close. They're a villain. They're a mercenary. They don't have any scruples. They don't have any morals. They're not trying to do anything good or accomplish any goal other than just advance their coffers and their standing, their territory, their control.
I thought that might be the end. Well, that has been The Knife of Dunwall. I hope you've enjoyed. And next episode, we're going to be playing the third and final DLC for the original Dishonored, The Brigmore Witches.